What I'm going to be looking at today is how to create games using processing. Processing is a language that is very similar to Java. In fact, its base is Java. It's just that it's much simpler to use as far as drawing goes. So it's got a lot of things that make it a lot easier to draw things to the screen. So we're going to be using that to create video games. So to begin with, I've actually created a set of code that's kind of a base set of the game. This has a lot of code that will allow you to do basic game objects. It already contains the X and Y position of all those things. It allows you to do some simple yes or no question boxes. It does some collision detection, things like that. So I'm going to start my game with this. You can either use Processing, the actual downloadable app. So it looks something like this. Or you can do a similar thing for Android. There is a processing app for that. And then finally, there is a website that uses Open Processing, which is a JavaScript port of the processing language. Almost everything works the same. I'll try and point out things that are different as you go. So I'm going to create a sketch. So in Open Processing, I have to make sure I'm on the Processing.js language. And then I'm going to paste the base game in. The base game has all of this extra code, but when you actually run it, it's not very exciting. is isn't that exciting. It's a blank window. So let me go ahead and save this real quick, because I'm going to want to be able to change this later. So the game that I'm going to be creating is called The Catch Game. It's from an old Game Maker class I taught a long time ago. I'm just porting it over to processing instead. The basic idea is that we're going to have a level. Uh, room is no longer relevant, but that's all right. An avatar that we're going to control using the keyboard arrow keys, and I'll show you how to use WASD if you want. Have an object that's chasing us, items we can collect, and we're going to use lives to end the game, and then a scoring system. So I'm going to call this catch. And for my purposes, it will be the catch demo. Catch a series of objects before the enemy gets you. Keyboard, well, arrow keys or WASD to move. That looks good. Submit. So now whenever I go to this link, that will actually let me do this. So to begin with, let's see if we can create an actual avatar on the screen. I'm going to create a new game object to do that. So down below here, if you go past a lot of this code, there's collisions, answers, questions, get objects, update objects, game object. So this is based a little bit on Unity as well. But basically, a game object has a bunch of these attributes. Game objects have x, y, speed, direction, width, height, sprites, object colors, IDs, class tags, and ID tags. They can be solid, and they can deal with alarms. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that starts at the beginning using game objects. I'm going to create a variable to hold my game object. My object. And I'm going to create it in here. So my object is a new game object, and I'm going to tell it in the parentheses where I want to place it on the screen. I don't know, maybe 50 pixels in on the x and the y axis. So this is how far in on the x axis to place it, this is how far in on the y axis to place it. I should probably give it some sort of speed and direction. So my object dot speed, I'm going to set it to 2 I guess. This is basically how much it's going to add every time it does a frame update. And then I'm going to set its direction. This is using 0 being to the right, the left is 180, up is 90, down is 270. And then keep in mind the x and y position, that's going to matter a lot. So let's actually go look at GameMaker's coordinate system because it's the same as that.
So the idea is that as you go across, that is the x position, and as you go down, that's the y. So notice that 0, 0 is the upper left. And so it kind of just demonstrates that here in the directions. As far as angles goes, 0 degrees is to the right. Go up is 90, left is 180, down is 270, and then 360 gets you back to here. So this is kind of the same coordinates that we'll be using for ours. Now, we're using a slightly smaller room in that we're doing 600 by 400, but that's just so that I can make sure that hopefully it'll fit on Chromebook screens. If I do this, what do I get? A simple box moving across the screen. Best game ever. Well, that was exciting for a moment until I realized that, like, if I press any arrow keys, that's not moving at all. So next, I'd like to add in something where I can actually move around. This is going to be down under the key pressed event. So I have this basic key pressed event, which has nothing in it at the moment. So now I have to tell it what to do when I actually am going in a particular direction. Processing has this extra thing where I have to say that the key is coded for some of the ones that are not something you can type on the screen, so if it's left or right or whatever it is. So I'm going to say if it's a coded key, and if the key code is left, notice that I've been putting in braces every time. So I, when I open up a brace, I always close it right away. Same thing here. That's good practice to get into so that you always can make sure your braces match up. I do the same thing with parentheses, where I'll put it in the parentheses and then backspace so I'm between them and then enter in the code. Notice that, the two equal signs here, that is checking to see if this thing is the same as this one over here. Whereas up above, when I say one equal sign, I'm taking the speed variable and putting the two inside of it. So one more quick thing. Whenever you see this dot command, that means I'm going inside of my object and setting its speed variable. I'm going inside the object, setting its direction variable. So my object is basically a thing that has a whole bunch of variables contained inside of it under one name and I get to an individual thing inside of it using this period. Going on, if we do press left, what should we do? So we should probably move in a particular direction. So I'm going to say my object dot move, and I'm going to tell it to move to in the 180 direction, so it goes the other way. So move, what is that? Well, if I go down here under the game objects, so here is all the game object code. Destroy move. All it's doing is it's taking whatever speed is in this first thing and is setting it to be the speed, grabbing its direction, setting it to be the direction. I could do that in two commands and just set those two directly, but I don't have to. So I could do it similar to how I did it up here. So let's see what happens. Left keyboard, and it goes to the left. Excellent. Well, we probably want the other directions as well. I'm going to go on and add in a key code to the right, up, and down. I'm going to put this on the same line just for space's sake, but it actually doesn't matter whether you put it on the next line or not. So if the key code is right, then I want to move basically in the direction I started. So 2 and then 0 is the right direction. That's the angle. Otherwise, if the key, I can spell, that's supposed to be key. If the key code is up, my object.move speed of 2 and then up is 90 degrees. Notice I'm putting these semicolons at the ends of lines that are commands, whereas if it's an if statement, or if it's a function like this, it always ends in a brace instead, and not a semicolon. So executing a command has this at the end of it. And the final direction, key code equals down. So move in the 270 direction. Let's see how that does. All right, seems to be moving okay. 
tighten this up a little bit. Now, let's see what happens if I do accidentally put in the wrong name here. So when I run this, it says, hey, that's not a thing. And it's trying to tell you some information about what's going on. And if you look at the stack, it tries to tell you roughly where things went wrong. It may not actually work very well in the JavaScript version as to which line went wrong. In processing the actual app, it'll be a lot better. But it will try and give you a hint as to what's going on. By the way, down here, this is called a console. And if I wanted to, I could try printing things out to it. So for example, if I want to check to see if the key codes are working, I could say, hey, a key was pressed. And when I run this, as soon as I press down, it says key was pressed. So I often use this for trying to figure out if there's an error in my code because I'll take this print line and I'll put it at various places in my code to see if it's working or not up to that point. If I don't see that print line, that means that wherever that line is, whatever this print line is at, it never got run. So it's a way for me to kind of search through my code and figure out which things are working and which things aren't. Eventually, I realize, hey, I know how to spell. And there we go. Okay, excellent.